I've got an interesting little project for us to do today. Now, one of the most frequently asked for things that I've had of late is how to build an AR-15 type grip. Now, these are becoming very popular on a lot of air guns as well. And despite looking like a relatively complex shape to make, if you break it down to its simplest forms, they're actually quite straightforward. With a bit of practice, it's not even too hard to reduce the rake angle quite a lot, make it more of a target orientated grip, even putting in a nice big palm swell and some wrist support on here. Another one there in the orange laminate. What I'm gonna do is show you all of the tools that I use. I'm gonna show you something incredibly important for the build. Now I devised a jig years and years ago when I was doing some bits on AR platform stuff. And I'm going to turn that into something like this. Now this is a bit of birch laminate. It's what, 50 mil thick, 55 mil thick. I've drawn around it just a little oversize. And this is what we're then gonna chop out and turn into the grip. As much as it pains me to say it, when it comes to making items like this, it actually pays to be a little bit wasteful with your wood. Keeping this square for the moment means that we've got much more to clamp it up in the jig. It'll allow us to keep it true when we're routing out the top piece. It'll also allow us to clamp it on an angle when it comes to drilling down through for the fixing bolt that goes down through the bottom. Now realistically these do look quite complicated but if you imagine that that's what's inside your grip so if your grip was cut in half it would look something like this. Now if you're trying to drill that at an angle yeah it'd be fairly awkward but considering we've got a parallel line here We've got a right angled fixing bolt hole through there. If we actually make the grip and jig it up to cut the slot out and drill it and counterbore it all in the same jig, we can keep it completely upright, offset at its 30 degree angle, which is the angle of the fixing bolt that drops down through the center of the grip itself. It means it's gonna be an awful lot easier. The first thing that I like to do is do the round over on here now this is actually a quarter inch radius so although a lot of the european made air guns have got metric fixing bolts the actual width of the slot is in most cases metric compared to like a three-eighths equivalent for an american ar for instance but it's worth double checking what you've got so this is a lower off of a air arms s510 tactical and that's the lower off of a fx dream tac now the actual length of this piece here actually varies between the two now of course they put a fixing up through here on the fx one the actual ar sizing is much closer to the air arms version so you can see it's got a slightly longer back edge on here however the basic dimensions are much the same now that's a quarter inch radius in there the easiest way to do this is to do it on the router table i've got a cutter of the correct radius so i can just knock that edge off quickly on the router table you could always draw around a half inch diameter rod you could take it off on a sander you could file it it's best not to overthink these things whatever tools you've got to hand now again another dimension that's the same through all of these let me just focus that the position of the fixing bolt hole from this front edge so if you reference from this front edge of the grip once we're set up like this, to the center of the fixing bolt hole itself is 17 mil when you've cut this at the correct depth. Now on all of these grips, this lower edge here is 20 mil down from the top edge of that radius. So when you know that, it simplifies it all quite well. But I will at the end, like I say, pop some photos up so you can copy all the dimensions and the same with the inlet and jig that I use. I'll um, put some pictures up at the end of that as well. That's quite a straightforward jig. You only need two plywood boards, could be MDF boards, whatever you can get your hands on, as long as these two boards are the same size. Doesn't matter about the ends, as long as the top and bottom edges are parallel with each other, that's all you really need to worry about. Now here, this is the trick. If you grab yourself one of these readily available kiddies school protractors and set it a few mil down from the top edge of your board, 
strike an angle that's your zero mark that's 90 degrees to this top edge so you can do that with your square but just strike a line down across the board if you then offer this a few mil down from that surface if you then mark on 60 degrees and 30 degrees that will give you the angle to set that grip back so that now we can use this to drill straight down through the top of the jig and the grip will be angled back at the correct angle. What I've done is actually just super glued on some little slithers, I mean lolly sticks, anything like that. Now these work as little fences. So when I come to offering up my blank, I can set it in here. I can remove it if I need to double check things as I'm going and it means I can always put it back in the same position each time. Now this, then I've popped four holes through this, which I then use four bolts with wing nuts on the back of them. So the front board will sit like this, and then I'll sandwich the laminate piece in between them. I've just set the router table up. I've got my quarter inch radius round over bit in here. If you're not familiar with router tables and you're quite new to it, it's probably a good idea to do a test pass. I did a test pass on this piece of scrap just to make sure that it's set up correctly before taking your expensive piece of laminate. It fits better than the factory grip in there now. All I'm going to do at the moment is just round over this top corner on here. Now, once you've rounded that top edge over, it's time to offer it up to your jig. Now, what you need to do, hopefully you can see that, set it up against your guides. You then need to measure the distance from this top edge to the top edge of your grip. Now, on this one, it's four mil. The cut depth that we need into here is 20 mil. I've got four mil between the top of the grip and the top of the guide board. Add yourself a millimetre on to be on the safe side. So the overall cutter depth, my maximum protrusion of the cutter from the router base in this jig is 25 mil. Now yours may well be different, so offer it up first as it is now. Just mark on the back edge of the angle piece and the lower edge here. Now that mark I can transfer over to here. So once this is jigged up, the cutter is going to come in this way and that will be the stop point for my cut. That's the jig assembled. This is going to be the top edge that the router is going to run across. The easiest way to set this up is to turn it upside down so you can see my guides in here. Offer that up to your fences and then just turn it upside down on a flat surface. these bolts up. Okay, now just check that it's in there square up against your fence. This one I glued on a bit wafty so it always sits like that. Now this can go in the vise. I will trim this bottom edge off before I put it into the drill to drill it but the router now, I've got two guide rails for the router. I'm going to actually, the cut that I'm going to put into here, I'm going to offset it slightly to the right side. I'm going to put a thumb groove on the left hand side. So I'm going to offset the little cut just to the right hand side of the grip itself. So the center line of my cut is going to go about there. And this is the back edge that we marked from the tapered piece on the lower section. So that will be the back edge of my cut. I've just popped some marks on the back of my guide boards here. You can put a clamp on here to act as a stop or you could even then glue on some little blocks so that every time you use the same router and the same jig and you're making up the grips, you can't go too far wrong. I've set the depth stop now on the router to 25 mil. I won't attempt to do that in a single pass, it's asking for trouble. So I'll do probably four or five shallow passes and creep up on that depth. If you try and do that in one go, it's probably gonna go pear shaped. Well, that's cut out lovely. 
Okay, so she's in. This is the ideal thing with that jig. I can remove this, double check the fit. Now what we need to do is drill down through the center of it. So I need to just knock off this bottom corner that was sticking out the bottom of my jig. I'm gonna quickly lock that corner off. Just this little piece down here. And then I'm gonna mark up here. I'm gonna mark up from this front edge. I'm gonna measure back 17 millimeters into the hole here. And then on the center of my slot, I'm just gonna make a mark and then pop it back in the jig to drill it. It's all back in the jig now. I've marked the center of the slot in its width. And I've measured that 17 millimeters back from that front edge and that will give me my reference point for that hole. I've set a couple of stop blocks up in here. So if you was batching a few of these out, you could literally come straight back in and you wouldn't even have to mark them out. That last bit of the hole I'm just gonna do with the hand drilling a long drill bit. I've got quite a lot of wood on the underneath of the grip that wants ripping off. so. If I don't get a clean hole where it breaks through the bottom, it really doesn't matter because I've still got almost a centimetre to cut off the bottom of that. So I'll do that now. I've just drilled clean through with the hand drill with a long drill bit in and now I'm going to counter bore. This is the underside. It's bolted on there, lovely. Next thing to do, you want to decide about trimming off the excess wood on here. I think for the moment, I'm going to bring a bit of this rake out of here, so I'm going to bring this finger groove back and I'm going to stand the whole grip a little bit more upright. When you do that, you just need to be mindful of where your fixing bolt hole is. This whole side I'm going to rip off anyway and leave a little thumb shelf on the side here. Just drilled some holes through to start establishing some finger grooves. I've ripped it down now, so this is just under 40 mil wide. I've left a bit of a step here that'll end up being shaped into a thumb shelf on that side. And I've just got some reference marks for when I start bringing in a little bit of a palm swell, a little trigger lead in, and then these are the edges I'm going to start rounding back. I'm unsure about this bottom edge yet and the back edge yet, so I'll start this way, work my way around the outside of the grip. That's where I've got to with the old spindle sander. I've kept it all slightly oversized. This back edge I just ripped off on the bandsaw. So at the moment, it's a little on the large side. I'm gonna now hit it with the orbital sander, 120 grit. That'll bring it down to not far off of the final size and then I'll work down through the grades. And then when it comes back to the finger grooves, I'll do that with a sponge back sanding pad in the spindle sander to make that all nice and smooth. Well, that's turned out lovely. Got my nice little thumb shelf on the side of it. Keeps my palm relatively open. When you come to sizing your grips up, it's always best to start on the slightly large side. Of course, it's a lot easier to remove wood than it is to stick it back on again. You should always be mindful to keep quite well away from the fixing bolt and the counter bore and the underside of it. When I shape these out, I like to do a little bit around the back edge of the grip first, start bringing this back edge in and then start encroaching onto the actual finger grooves themselves and then work my way around to the back edge of the grip. If you want to put a thumb shelf in, then of course you need to leave that additional wood on to start with, but that's turned out now. So I'm gonna go and test this before I finish it. I'm gonna go and fit this to one of my actions that I can't show you yet. Do a bit of testing with that. If I need to make any fine tuning adjustments to it, then I will do before I oil it up. I'll probably do another video of oiling it actually. I'll see you in the next one.